Hello, Melissa. Hi, how are you? I'm okay, thank you. How's your dad doing? Um, not much progress at the moment, unfortunately, but then again, things could be a lot worse, so... Well, that's good. Not, not worse is something. <clears throat> Yes, yes, that's what we keep telling ourselves. It's something. Yes, thank you. Is he home or is he still in the hospital? Um, he's gone back to the hospital again. Okay. Yeah. So, All right, well, keep me posted. What? It, can you see the screen? I can, thank you, yes. Did you do Disney? Did you do BA? What are you doing? I have actually just closed BA out this afternoon. Um, but... It, I mean, I may kick myself because it might drop again tomorrow, but looking looking at it. I know, but I, I really thought day trade. So, I mean, if you held it through today, how much did you end up making in this then? Just we, short of 300. Oh, it was good. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. 56%. That was good. Terrific. Great. Yes. Yeah, and Disney, I took when you called it today. Mm -hmm. um, at the moment, I am... Um, how many did you do with these? Two or three or? I did three. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm down about a dollar, break even. Okay, so that's fine. That's not a big deal. Um, so this looks good. So then, Disney. go yes. ahead. Yeah, so you're you're on a roll here. So the last couple ones, you've been doing good. Yes, I have, thank you. Yeah, yes. Um, it has. Green is good. <laughs> But I mean, yeah. do you feel like you're more in a groove? I mean, obviously I'm calling trade after trade. What did you end up doing with the market ones? Did you get out of them last week or did you hold those through? Or what are you doing with those? I didn't take the second spider that you called because I was still in the first. And I let that run out. Mm -hmm. And then I, I took obviously took the profit off that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I, I did okay in that. I made, I made in, in those, so they were okay. But you didn't I just do didn't the other the ones. <clears throat> I didn't take the the um, the other spider. Um, I'm just looking back at my transactions now. Okay, so the yeah. only thing you have on right now is Disney, and that's it. Yes, I did lose a little bit on Amazon. Yeah, that Pick one, if you didn't get out of it when it had that lift, again, I don't know if you're watching your charts continuously. You know, lately it seems like I've been around, so I'm watching. But if you didn't watch it, then you might have gotten out of that break even or negative. But um, Google worked. I'm not, I wish you had asked me about which one to do because I would have told you Google was better than Amazon, but you chose to do. I mean, I again, I know you're working it through, but I mean, at some point, you know, I think your account will be back up again where you could do every single trade that I call. Yes. Because this definitely would have outweighed whatever you did with Amazon. This was a nice move. Into Google. Yes, yes, that was. Yes, I had a look at that. Yeah. I mean, it was a little bit more expensive than Amazon, but it wasn't like double the price. I mean, this wasn't cheap either. So, you know. <clears throat> yes, Amazon, I think when I looked at them, that was slightly more affordable for me as opposed to Google. But I know you've been, you've been mixing it up with your risk. That's why I said, how many did you do with this? So I have, you... but even then, one of the Google mm -hmm. was... Uh, pushing it a little bit too far. Uh, well, the, I know, uh, but you've risked five hundred dollars on this Disney or plus five hundred plus, haven't you? You did three. What do you? What is your uh, risk on this? The the Disney works out at three forty eight. Oh, okay, all right. So that's that's not too bad. That's okay. No, but last week you were risking like five hundred. I thought you said you were gonna stay with that then. So then you, well, you could have taken you could have uh, taken one more of these. I was thinking you risked five hundred dollars in this. I know it's. I don't want to push you too soon, as you know. I'm not you know. saying that you should. I'm just saying that know, you have to be consistent. And you're like, yes, boop, boop, yes. doo, 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 doo. I, I, I know, I know, we have that consistency. Yes, but the problem, <laughs> the problem is, you think you're better off taking more than one anyway, because then you can obviously split your profit, as I did with the spider, and I was taking. I, yeah, I that worked out good out for you. That. Yeah, that was so, fine. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when you've got to consider that as well, and when you take one, like I had in BA, 
you, you've just got to take it off the table when you see it. Otherwise, I don't want to. I mean, that was a decent chunk as well, was that? So I'm. I'm but I'm just saying, I think it's better if you're going to do that to do it in even numbers. Two, four, six, eight, ten. I, I agree. I, I agree. But unfortunately, sometimes when you are, when you when you're calculating your options up, it's either over or under so much. So you can't. You can't get it spot on every time, can you? No, that's why I'm saying pick an area. You know, I, I'm fine well, with that. Well, but I, have, I, I have. It's it's between basically between four and five, shall we say? I know, but you didn't you didn't take you didn't take a full amount of the Disney. It's three something or whatever you just said. But I mean, that's you, fine. It's fine. I mean, I mean. It, I, yeah, I mean, I have I have three contracts. So, um, what did I pay? I paid one sixteen. So wherever this gets a lift, take it out. If it pushes up tomorrow, right. great. If it pushes up Friday, do it. So wherever this gets a lift, that's my two cents on that. Don't necessarily hold this to the strike. That wasn't the reason I called it at that price. There wasn't a lot of choices in that to pick it for the what I thought was a good trade. So you don't necessarily have to hold this to the strike. Okay. Right. Was there, was there any reason why you called it when you called it rather than earlier? I just called it late. I mean, there's only so I only have one, you know, brain and two hands. So I mean, we ended up day trading this, and so I mean, like if I I should have got it out earlier, or you probably, you know, people would have been happier. But I mean, again, you're not in the room yet. I I I hope you come back to the room for May. You know, I hope you start to day trade again. I think you're doing well. Maybe you need to prove to yourself that you can do well, but I don't know. I don't know where you're at with your head. I know you prefer doing options now. Uh, you're doing well with them. I still think day trading is, I, I still think day trading is easier in the sense because of the trades, you're, you're definitely know where you're at and you're flat every day by the end of the day. And when you're in options, sometimes, yes, you can have good returns on investment in them, but you're stressed out. Like you, I, like, I don't know what this does tomorrow morning in the gap. This is good. This is, you're going to end up positive in this. This is going to run up here and in, right into the close. Look at this. Yes, here. that's good. It's yes, trying to close I it. mean, I, I was looking at taking it out tomorrow. After the, at the move it's had today, I was expecting, you know, some kind of pull in, shall we say. No, I'm not saying it's going to pull in tomorrow. I'm just saying wherever this goes, take it out. It may be tomorrow. It may not be tomorrow. I don't know. And you shouldn't be looking for those pull-ins. My God, I just was going to give you a hands up and say congratulations, and now you had to say a dirty word. <laughs> what do you what are you it? doing with this pull-in nonsense, huh? When a price drops, Melissa, when a price drops, what uh -huh. do you call it? Because it's either retracement, pullback. I don't call it retracement. I don't call it a pullback. I don't know. You tell me what I call it, because I just spit whatever comes out of my mouth, but I don't call it any of the two things that you just said. <laughs> Oh, I mean, I don't even know what you're talking about. Like, I don't even call that. There's nothing to call. I call the things that are working. This is getting bought today. It rallied. That's what you call. You don't call this, a retracement. You don't call a pullback. There's nothing no, to call. There's no, nothing to do I, I, when a stock does that. If you're looking to go long, that wouldn't give you an indication to do anything. There'd be no action required at that point. Do you understand? I'm an action-oriented person. So when I'm looking at something, yeah, I'm looking to yes. determine what it's doing when there's an action required. If this it pulls back in your mind or retraces there's a no action required at that point does that make sense so therefore there's nothing to call there's nothing to do there's no action <clears throat> yes yes it's more of the case of the terminology shall we say i know but, but i don't talk a, like a, that a red, day, a red day really i mean i suppose you refer to it as red days don't you yeah a red day i'm not saying this has a red day even if, even if it does, it, it, I, I don't even know what this does. I can't tell here until I see where it's going to open in the pre-market tomorrow. But I'm just saying, like, I, I was really going to give you a congratulations today because you've had, oh, you. like, five thank winners you. in a I'm row. And then you used a bad word and said pull back. And I just <laughs> seriously can't believe Erosion you're still price, talking like that. Power, I would say. What did you say? Erosion of price for the first half hour. Does right. that sound better? No, <laughs> none of it sounds good. You shouldn't be concerned with it. If you took the trade and you're flat or only up a little bit here, then the trade has room to go. And if you choose to take the trade based on your risk, whatever it does tomorrow, if it's not positive enough to feel that you would need to get out, if it doesn't run up, then you just move off of it because you took the risk, whatever, 375, 380, whatever you risk in this. 
that mm-hmm. it just, it's on. It's either going to go tomorrow or if it's not going to go. And if it's not going to go tomorrow, there's no reason sweating a bullet on it because you did it out past Friday anyway. So what are you worried about? Yes, I do. Yes, yes. Now, I'm not I'm not worried about it. It's just the fact that things are going or things have been going. Okay, thank you. So Yeah, I think I you're doing like well. Continue. So you've had three trades in a row, Green, that you booked money for, five. How many have you had here in a row? Um, Even Lulu. Did you? What did you do? With, did you end up getting out positive on Lulu? Oh, Lulu. Oh, not quite, but I was nearly there. I think that was probably down a hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean the break even was like seven hundred. That was. I mean, I was nearly down. I was nearly the the the, the position was nearly dead. I know so, that was like uh, this was like unbelievable. I mean, that was just like insanity. If anybody got out of this break even, I think that was a, like a positive trade in my mind. So if you lost a little in that, it's fine. So you ended up okay with that then. Yes, as soon as it went over the top on that and it turned on that red day, that first red bar, mm-hmm. I was out at that that moment in time. Okay. So yeah, that's fine. I, I couldn't have I couldn't have got out any better than I did anyway. So I was happy with that. Okay, so basically you did. Disney you're in, it's good. You made money in the spy last week. You lost yes. in Amazon. You made money in BA and you made money, I think, in the queues from the previous one. Yes. Okay. But not not you know, not a lot. We're not talking bucket loads here. You know, we're I'm 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 doing okay. Oh my god. Bucket loads. What how do you expect to make a bucket load if you're only doing one or two or three contracts? You can't make a bucket load. Well, let's say, I mean, I mean you got to get to that point. Say, I, this is some progress say, here. Covering, we, huh? Let's say covering the premium, Melissa. If I'm covering the premium, then I'm happy. If you're making money, you should be happy consistently. That's the I'm end of the story. I'm trying to do so, yes. Yeah. I am trying to do that. I yes. mean, I wish that you had done Google. So do a, I. Yeah, I mean, I wish you had even done the spy, but it, 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 it doesn't matter. There's a couple you didn't do. So you didn't do the cues either then. You didn't do the cues or the spy because you would have been up in the cues yesterday. I, I don't, you know, I don't know what you would have done with it, but. I, I did do. I'm talking about the new one. <clears throat> the, new, the new one. I thought you only called one cues and I thought that was the one that I did. Was it the 180 call? If you, if you got out of it, it's 412. If you got out of it already, then I'm not, I don't understand why I got out of it already. Yeah, I think that's the one I did, actually. Oh, uh, all right. I did okay on that. I made 452, so that was good. Okay, then you did do that one. All right, then you did. Yeah, yeah, I did. And I did the, the previous spy there's at 282. Been, yeah, there's been so many. I'm just, you know. Yeah, I had 400 on that. That was okay. So, and Lulu, yes, I lost... Hundred and sixty dollars actually on that. Okay. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Okay, good. It, All right, I think you're doing well, and uh, just stop with the talk, the pullbacks and retracement talk because it's it's not gonna it, it just doesn't benefit you at all. Well, it's visual, isn't it? You see it, don't you? There's nothing yeah. here to see at all about anything. You shouldn't be seeing that, don't you understand? Like that. The fact that your brain is working in that way, that you're seeing anything like that is concerning because there's nothing to gain from that. There's nothing that you're going to see when you see what you're saying that's going to give you information that's going to help you make a decision to make money. So therefore, stop seeing it. That's, I mean, like, I don't see it. Do you under, I don't, I don't know if this is what I'm trying to say is coming across, but like, I don't talk like that because my brain doesn't think like that. And so that's why I'm trying to, I, I'm trying to tell you to, not see it and not think like that and just like delete it do you know what i'm saying no i don't stop um, looking I, at whenever, a chart whenever, like that you say, well mm-hmm. i see i see waves on a chart so i see i know but right, i didn't I, falling. I didn't i didn't so, teach you that i didn't teach you that but, and i want you no, to forget you, about doing how, that. how do you see that how do you see bars that fall you, you must see red days you see red days i mean obviously you shot red days and you shot red I see a chart based on the gaps. That's the only thing that I see. We've gone over this before. You've been with me long enough to know that's the only thing that I see. It's the only thing that matters. It's the only thing that I even am concerned myself with. I don't see anything else. Right. Right. So you don't... I mean, you, you must look at the gaps that 
the fall, you know, you've got you've got the as I know you do, mm -hmm. you look at gaps down. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what happens when you get three days, two days down, you've got a gap, and then yes, it it retraces from there, then rises, price rises, and it continues. I don't even Which know what they, you're talking about without looking at something, but again, you're talking about retracements and pullbacks. What you just described was that. I focus on the gap, so I don't, you know, I mean, I this is, I'm kind of shocked that, like, after all the time that you've been listening to me, like, you still don't get that part of it. Like, I mean, this is something that you well, really so, got to think about. I, I absolutely get what you mean on gaps. I, I, I see that. Yeah, I definitely see that. But you're, but you're not focusing on that as the only thing that counts. You're focusing on all this other stuff. Um, I don't focus on it. I focus on the gap. That is what stands out. Just tell me, me that you focus see? on the wave. Well, you can't help but see retracements and sitting on support. I don't see that at all. I don't even see that. I don't even, it's like, it, that's like, it doesn't so, even, I don't even know what you're talking about. So the, the chart <laughs> that we're looking at, we're looking at the chart of the spine now. Yes. If and we go back to between October and December. There are three peaks. All, like all that resistance. word has no meaning either, but go ahead. All oh. right. <laughs> I'm just letting you know these things are like talking like jibber jabber, but go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, but when you look at those three peaks and you can then continue it across to You're the You're talking land. about this, this, and this. Yes. Yeah, I'm talking about that top. Yes, there. Yes. Which then continues across to the right and becomes resistance, doesn't it? So, and then you get it hitting resistance, then dropping back from it, and then off the market goes again. So what's your point? Wh well, it's more terminology because you, you've got that. No, it's the way that your brain is actually functioning and reading this in the way that you described it, which I would never have. So it is the way that your brain works and you can control your brain or you cannot control your brain. But if you teach your brain to look at something in a certain manner, which I did, you know, 10, 11 years ago, then that's the way your brain reads it. And this is where the intuition comes into it. And it's a knowing. So your brain just functions like when you walk down the stairs, you don't think about taking one step in front of the other. I don't think about reading gaps. I go, boop, there it is. And then I just see it. And then I go to the analysis. But I mean, my brain functions in a way that I don't think like yours. And so... I think the problem is you're so wanting to make it, it fit into the construction of all the other things that you've learned and it isn't working out that way. And until I realized that with you, I'd say the last six months or longer, I realized that those things actually interfere with your ability to be able to, to get into that knowing period where you're looking at the gaps because the things that you're talking about, peaks or valleys or... <laughs> I don't know whatever you just said. Well, I mean, really actually affect yeah. your ability to be able to focus on what's important, which is the gap. Yes, I do focus on the gap. But obviously the gap, I mean, when you look at that, the spy when it fell off in December, mm -hmm. there are what's several gaps. And it obviously hit resistance. Then it gapped the second day, big red bar. Mm -hmm. Then it gapped again. Mm -hmm. And it closed the gap, then it fell again. Again, so, that's something that I don't talk about either. But anyways, what's your point? Well, again, well, well, what I'm trying to get over is that there's obviously several gaps on that chart, which obviously give you indications of where the market is going. I'm still trying to figure out what you're trying to get the point across here, though. Well, the main thing is I was just talking about the fact that we have, we hit resistance, then you get that price the price then drops from resistance which it did on that but on that last on that last touch really of resistance and then you got that big red bar. right and that's when you had everyone on tv screaming bearish except for me about the market yes yeah. well it, it was to a point wasn't it it fell off into the end of the year i know but we never broke the uptrend again. but we never broke the uptrend yes yes if you're looking further back yes i know what you're looking at yes so what's your point, though? My point is the fact that you still get support and resistance, don't you? It, it, but you can't be trading based on that. You can look at that to help you combine with something like where you want to get in a good position or if you want to take an exit or something like that. But as far as saying, I'm going to go long here on support, I'm going to short into resistance, 
you know as well as I do that that doesn't work to consistently determine how you should be trading. And one of the reasons that it doesn't is because very often people don't read support and resistance correctly or they can't read a trend correctly. But you know how to do this. I mean, I'm yes. just so surprised that you still keep talking like this, but it really, it's like, how many years did you trade before you actually met me? I think it was longer than I was aware of. Five, 10, 15, 20? Um, a long time. That was before when you used to go and buy stock over the counter when I started trading. So <laughs> which like is 20 a years. Yeah. So like 20 years then, the 90s. I mean, it, yeah, at least 20 up, years, huh? Yeah. 80s, yes. So more than 20 years. So that, yes. this is eye opening for me. So that is why you are so stuck on this stuff. So if, since the 1980s. Yeah, but you don't, yes, but you don't pick all this stuff up at one go, do you? you it doesn't you, matter. You, That's when you began you know. and you learned this, these things, which many people do. I'm not criticizing you for that. Many people do teach this and many people talk like that. Again, people talk like that on TV I'm on with, but don't you see that that's, there's something lacking there because but, obviously. But surely that's just a term of phrase really, as opposed to what you see in a gap. I mean, I understand what you see in a gap. But your brain isn't Especially working strong. like that. Your brain is working. The words that you speak actually do have meaning. You can call it a term, but that's what you're, you're describing, what your brain is actually seeing. So the words, when you say a word, now just think about this, the, you, when you say a word, if you're saying the word, it's the thing that your brain is thinking. It's like if you tell someone, I can't stand your guts, I hate you. Or if you tell the person, I'm in love with you. It's what your brain is thinking or your heart is feeling. It just spits out of your mouth. So, I mean, you can't, you can't say to someone, oh my God, I'm in love with you if you really hate their guts. It would be really hard to do. So the fact oh, is that when you yes. say, when you talk like this, that you're seeing support or resistance or you're wanting it to pull back, that is how your brain is working. So you're being natural in your in your words and your communication. So do you see how you have to change the way your brain is thinking? And so that's where the skill comes in. It's a skill set where you train your brain. Now you can train your brain like that, or you can take a long time to train your brain. I'm trying to help you here do this but you're instead of retraining your brain you're wanting to just add another piece of the puzzle in but it's not that's where there's a that's where there's like a missing piece right you're trying to put a picture of a puzzle together in something which is a chart to determine the direction the next direction it's going to go but you're using pieces from a different puzzle it's like if you were putting together a puzzle of a of a forest and, you're, and then you have another puzzle going on in the side, and that puzzle is a winter wonderland. You're trying to take pieces from this that you think meet in that one because you mixed them all up and you got them mixed up one night. And now you realize, wait a minute, that piece of the puzzle belongs to the other puzzle. Now I know. And then the picture becomes clear. I don't know if this is making sense, but I'm trying to explain this in a way that does. Yes, <laughs> yes, I understand what you mean. You're trying to yes. take a picture from a puzzle that belongs in another puzzle and put it in this puzzle because it's brown and it looks like a similar shape. But when you stick it over, you say, wait a minute, it doesn't quite go in there. And then then you have to, then you realize, and you scratch your head and say it goes in the other puzzle. And now I don't know where that other piece is supposed to go. And the puzzles are mixed up. And this is, you know, this is the thing about trading. But anyways, I don't talk like that. And there's a reason because I just don't think like that in my mind. Right, but you, you use resistance and support as targets, don't you? Yeah, but that's already after you're in the trade and determine where it's going to go. So, I mean, if I know, if I, if I say, well, this is a good bullish gap and we go long it, then we're in. And then I say, oh, boop -a doo this is like, I mean, let's just go to Disney right now. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think, and I should probably do a video tonight. I, I don't. I'm not saying a shot in hell, but you know, I think it's a long shot for Disney to go to 120 in the next two weeks. I mean, I, I mean, it could, I mean, I guess anything's possible, but it's a long shot, but the trade will be positive at 118, 118, 50, 119-ish with the market. Yes. So it's a long yeah. shot that this goes to 120 or through that in the next two weeks. It could happen. It's a long shot. And I probably need to send that out tonight in the letter, but the trade will be positive. It will be whatever it is, it will be positive if it runs up to 118, 11850, 119. So yes, yes. so I'm looking at that, but again, that's not the like 
that was this is an afterthought. I don't know if this makes any sense. Like I saw the gap, and that's I saw the gap in the pre market. Ooh, this is gonna rally, and then yes. it had a much bigger yes. move today than I thought. I understand what you saw <laughs> when I looked at the the one minute chart. When you, you know, look at that, you see where the gaps opened in relation to previous bars, shall yeah. we say? So, but anyways, the, top, the support and resistance here is not the determining factor for taking the trade. Does that make sense? So it's like you're not taking trades or you're exiting trades or you're worried about trades. Yes. Like, you yes, know what I'm but, but saying? You, 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 you obviously take that into consideration, don't you? When you look at the trade as a position to take long or short, don't you? Well, I do. I don't know what you're looking at, but that's what I'm saying well, for you. That, I, I'm looking at the same thing. I mean, uh -huh. it's like uh, it's like BA today. I mean, I'm looking. Uh, I'll be surprised if it doesn't. If it doesn't. It probably hit will, but it's. Active. Yeah, I mean, but I was trying to be conservative with this as well because yes. it's. I mean, I I this needed a big fat red day. Didn't have it today. Probably somewhere in here this will. Will it? Will oh, it tomorrow? tomorrow. <laughs> I don't, I don't know, though. Who can say? Fed minutes are out tomorrow afternoon. If that ends up being well, this probably will not go right tomorrow. This is, this is kind of like a wild card. It was, it was, it was, it worked. It was, it was money. It wasn't like, this wasn't like, oh, this is the most amazing thing in the world. I mean, I don't see that here right now. So, I mean, you did a good job with this. You did a good job with it. It worked out in your favor, but, um, I don't even know what I was trying to say here, what you were trying to it, say. It did, it did, but I, I'm looking for some kind of target to say, well, there's a possibility that it will hit this level. So yeah, but it again, it still has to do it. To I know, but it still has to do it in the time that you're in the trade. If you're in an option trade, it's not a it's not a swing trade. The same thing with the day trade. It still has to hit it before 4 o'clock. you got to exit the trade before 4. you got to get out of the option before it expires. I mean, oh, it's, absolutely. So, Which is I mean, why I took it yeah. out today. Yeah. Because... One day of a bounce, and I will lose all the profits. So and no, that could very well happen. I don't know if it will, but I'm saying it could. It could. It could happen. Yes. Anyways, I'm seeing here the problem with you. You never told me that you started trading in the 80s. I did not realize that. But either way, that is one of the reasons why there's some things going on in your head that I, I've been, you know, round and round with you about. So I don't know. I mean, you're going to have to come with a meeting of the minds at some point where you're going to decide that you don't, you don't want to – look at those things but i'm not sure i mean it definitely is difficult if you for 30 years you've been looking at things in the same way and you have to change it i you know that i don't know what to say it's kind of almost like you have to just erase everything and start over again i don't know but you yes. don't think it's a problem that's the that's 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 the problem too you don't think these other things are a problem i think they are for you you don't think they are so you know well I I don't I don't consider them to be a problem, but obviously there's something that you have at the back of your mind when you look at a, a chart and you think, well, it could do this. You either following candles, you look at candles, and they give you indications of what what may or possibly will happen. So you know you go down the candlestick route, and obviously then you can pick other things up, can't you, with various lagging indicators, which drive me nuts anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I do not use anyway. Um, so, you know, you do have various things, don't you, that you pick up automatically as you go along. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, you I, I don't, you know, I, know, I don't know what you're talking about because I don't. I don't, I don't like that. Huh? I don't like that. I'm not going to touch that. Have you not? Have I not what? Have you not looked at other things that are no. passed you by? No. Do you honestly right, think that I haven't? I mean, at speed. But, you know, uh, I am you... very, very, very in my own mind. I mean, my God, look at the way that I talk with people on TV that disagree with me. Like, I don't give a crap what anyone else thinks. I mean, I literally just oh, yes. like I'm in my own mind with what I know. And that is pretty much it. So, no, I do not look at anything else. I don't there's it's not necessary. Right. But that comes from the conviction and the confidence and the confidence has to come from having consistent green trades, which you're doing better with, which is really, really good. That's good, you know. Um, so we'll, we'll see it how is. you do in earnings season here, you know. Yes, yes, I'm moving in the right direction. I have to be thankful for, yes. Yeah, 
I mean, you sound more positive, which is good. Oh, thank you. I'm glad. I'm yeah. glad I sound. <laughs> no, I mean, you do. I, I don't, I mean, you've had a series of good trades. I'm not, I'm not sure what to tell you, though, about the fact that you've been looking at charts for as long as you have, to, as far as not looking at other things. Um, well, shall we say that's I when know. I really start, well, I started, but I mean, you know, very tentatively many, many years ago mm -hmm. with, you know, buying stock over the counter. It's a bit like the old bucket shops, really, I suppose, really, but. That's how I started, and literally trading, trading on account because you didn't have to pay for it for two weeks. So that is was hilarious. Like that. You could yeah, buy a yeah, stock a and time. not pay for it for two weeks. Yes, it was held on account. So but, the but stock. Did you, did, so you're not actually trading like we do now. Mm -hmm. You know, I was trading the right. funds you would buy mm -hmm. as if you were going to buy the stock. And then actually sold it before you had to hand the cash over. The did counter. you have? You didn't have margin though. You had to pay the full price, no, or how did that, that work? Was it. You, yes, you would. You would stump up the full price if you were completing the transaction, shall we say? That is hilarious. But I didn't get to the full transaction because I would have closed the position out before it was settlement day. Well, what if you were down though? Well, that's where the loss would come in. You would not receive <laughs> the full amount back, would you? you know? that's but that's it. <laughs> So yes, that was a while ago. That was a while wow, ago. Wow, that is like ancient times. Mm, yeah. But I mean, but the, I will I will comment on one thing you're talking about. Of don't I do other things? I don't. But if I if I happen to be in a conversation with someone on TV, or if I happen to catch someone else's webinar, if I'm getting on the mic, or if I happen to look at another email or get solicited or something, I will tell you this: if I happen to skim something else. The one benefit of that is it always strengthens my own conviction in what I'm doing. That has actually helped me get better, I'd say, in the last few years. Right. Not only being on TV, but also actually if I will take the time, which I usually don't, but if I would take the time to read something or listen to two sentences of what someone would say, and I realize that it's, it's, it's totally idiotic, it actually helps my conviction what I know that has helped my own ability to continue to do better over time. So in that sense, it has benefited me, but it's never that I look at that, whatever that other person said and gives it any weight or positivity or say, the, oh yeah, well that person knows what they're talking about. I, I don't feel that way because what I look at is so unique. And you know, December and the call that I made at the market is probably proof positive of that because I mean, I was on the opposite side of pretty much everybody. You know, but even I yes. did not know the market would go completely straight up, which is basically what it has done. I mean, I didn't know that. I mean, I can't see everything into the future. I did not know that would occur. That, you know, that to me even was outstanding. Well, that's that's just it, isn't it? It's knowing how far and how long to take a trade and what the gap is telling you to But you don't have to worry percent. about it. You, that's a nice thing. You don't have to worry about it because you're in and out and you're active. You're not managing a hedge fund and you don't have millions of dollars on, you're active. So if you happen to get out of a trade and make 50%, that's okay. If you happen to get out of a trade and make 150%, that's great too. Your only goal is to make money. And so if you're active, you have that wiggle room. You can watch something live and make a decision if it's going to continue or follow through or not that day and get out. Now, that's where I'm saying to you, I think the way that you look at things has sometimes hurt you because sometimes you've looked at something, you think that it's going to stop and then it does continue, you read it wrong in live time. But again, this is about the fact that in, in live time when things are happening very quickly, if I'm not directing you in the room, then you're, it's up to you. And if you're, if your mind is not just in like a computer doing it without analyzing it through, then it gets away from you. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes, it does. Definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously looking at BA and thinking, yes, I made profit today, but what if it falls again tomorrow? So, but the um, likelihood of that, even though it's high, based on the possibility of the follow through here, is not that high when you consider the fact that the FOMC minutes are out tomorrow afternoon and the market may rally and would fail. Would, this would fail. So, again, this wasn't the biggest trade in the world, and I didn't say it was. So, I mean, your exit today and this or yesterday as an exit was fine. Some trades are just trades. Disney is just a trade. That's it. I'm telling you right now. I, I, I you know, I mean, I'm telling you, Disney is just a trade. The, yes. Do it. Yes. Make that, money. Whatever. That, 
that is the fact uh, really which is missing that I need to hammer in really the fact that yes it's money yes it's profit take mm -hmm. it off the table look for the next one I'm trying to as I always have done really trying to look for getting what the cost is out so that I'm covering all the time I'm trying to cover what I am actually laying out in a premium. What do you mean you're trying to cover? Something. If you take a trade and you risk three hundred dollars and you're up a hundred bucks, yes. then well, what do you mean? You're up a hundred bucks. Huh? We yeah, we've had this conversation before where, as I said, we are looking to make more than one. I know we have had this conversation and that's the goal in every trade, but I'm telling you, I've been calling a lot of trades recently on the letter. Sometimes when I see a move is gonna happen. And sometimes they're one R, sometimes they're more, sometimes they're less. So, I mean, we, this is the same conversation that we've had before. Yes, yes, it is, it is, it's, yes, and I am now, I have been taking money off the table, whatever the figure, I mean, today, what was it, 50-something percent in VA. That's a good trade, what's wrong with that? It's not even earnings season, it, just do it. What's, I mean, there's, that's not like... It's like I could have not called it. Like that would be dumb. Like, what do you mean? I mean, do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I, yes, I do. I do understand what you mean. Yes, because if it, you hadn't called it, then I wouldn't have made the fifty percent. So yes, it is money, and it's money that's banked. I know, but I mean, I'm losing what your point is here. Hurry up, because then I got I got to get going. I got to get some work done. It's only four thirty, but well, I'm I'm confused well, what your point is. No, it's just it's just the fact that what I'm laying out on the table on the following trade that I place, mm -hmm. I could lose. I don't know. So we say five hundred dollars if I'm risking five hundred, and I've just made two hundred dollars. We've been through this before. I did a video over the weekend, and I was analyzing that, and I'm going to analyze the day trades too. If you lost in every trade that didn't work out, you'd still be ahead this year. There were six losers, and even if you ended up losing in Lulu and didn't get out break even or didn't get out positive, which some people did, you'd have seven losers then in 22 trades it wouldn't even matter this is the same conversation we've had before when a system yes. has more winners than losers you would literally have to scalp it out and make you know 25 dollars and kill the trade and it just it just don't work like that the momentum either comes in and goes or it yes. is flat and lays there in which case you're stuck in it negative and then you wait through the train, which I told you to do, which I think you are doing. And Lulu is, I mean, this is, if this isn't a good example of the way that I look at a chart, I mean, even I was shocked that this ended up going positive because I mean, it was like, I saw something, but it's really like every single solitary one that I call, if they don't go right away, just hold the suckers. Because I mean, the chances of them going in the time that I call them is extremely high. Although it is so much better when it goes right away. In fact, I emailed you about this because I wanted to analyze what you did with this with the Costco and the Alta. I mean, look at this. Oh, yeah. Costco was a fantastic trade. I was like, a, I was like wait, stupid. Yes, yes. I mean, Pity it wasn't long, a longer term. Trade. I know. I mean, but there was, I mean, I, every time I looked at it, I was like, okay. I mean, this just, poof. I mean. Yes. I mean, the time, look at the red bars next to nothing. I, I know. Even today. Yes. In fact, yes. this is probably going to 250 before it even does anything at all. 247.09. I mean, you know. Yeah. Anyways, the point I was trying to make is don't overly concern yourself with risk reward. Concern yourself with taking the trades and making money in them and using the information that you learned from me to do that, which you know. But now that I know that you've been doing different things for 30 plus years, then I can see what the struggle you've gone through. But that is something that you were gonna have to correct. And if you're not willing to agree with me on that fact that it is affecting you in a, in, in a negative way, then then I don't, I don't know what I, to say to you about uh, that. But Melissa, I'm not disagreeing with you on any fact that you <laughs> have said. There's no disagreement there at all. I mean, I, I'm, you know, I see the way you place your trades and everything. And I see how you, you see charts and how they play out. So there's no disagreement there. It's just, it's just the simple fact of booking the money and just taking the money at the end of the day. That's I think it. you're too worried about getting out and you should, and that is, that has been problematic for you now. And it was problematic for you when you were risking $3,000 in a trade. 
So, I mean, that is, you know, I mean, that, again, that is something you still have not overcome. And you better believe you better overcome it now. Because if you get back to the point, if that's your goal by the end of 2019 to start being able to risk $2,500, $3,000 in these trades again, like you did before, oh, then, then, then you absolutely. need to get over the fact. Because, I mean, I mean, I, you can go back and watch the videos. I mean, there was trade after trade where you were up. 50%, 60%, 70%, and you didn't get out of the trades and you turned it around 100% and lost. So you that is something that you must overcome. You're too stuck on that thing of risk to reward. It's just let it be. Just let it be. Just let it be. In other words, like if it's something's going to go, just let it do its thing. Like like this in here. Like just let it do it. And there's nothing you don't even have to think and, and with this, you didn't really have to think that much at all. You could have thought, you could have thought when it didn't go right the first day, you could have gone out. And we talked about that. But what if you didn't, if you were away, if you missed it, if you didn't watch it, whatever, if your expectations were, I'm stuck on this to the end of time, it still ended up playing out. And if you hadn't, and if you lost it and killed it, then fine. But I'm just saying, like, it, it, it don't, you're making it too hard. This, you make, look at this, you why are we even talking about well, this? Well, you got out as, of this here. I told as, you you could have got out of it yesterday. Don't stress about this. You made money. No, like, as far as Lula goes, it was I lost basically on the erosion of price. I know, yeah. but then it turned around. Yeah. So yeah. then you just you, there's nothing to think about. It's just no, I, don't even in think time, in, in time. So you know, yes, it got over the price that I took it at, but the erosion of time. Literally, but you're missing the point. If you took it on the day, it dropped and fell. It was negative for everybody. Oh, if yes. you were still in the yes. trade, what's there to think about? It's called a do nothing. And so don't, there's what, there's nothing to think about. Either the trains run and go up or down, or they just, they're dead. And then sometimes they do like this thing here. So, you know, I mean, what I'm saying is don't overthink the exit. You are doing that. You are overthinking this. This might have a big day tomorrow. If it does, you shouldn't be concerned. If you could have made an extra $300, it's not a big deal. I'll call another trade sometime soon. So, I mean, it's like you did the right thing getting out of this because there was a situation in the next 24 hours that this could have failed to follow through. And to be honest with you, I really think it should have gone today. So it didn't, but I'm not saying that it doesn't, but I, to be honest with you, I think it should have gone today. So, you know. Right, right. That'll more more than it did, yeah. put it that way. Yes, yes. Yes, we'll see what it does tomorrow. That will be interesting. Anyways, don't overthink the exit. Right, I'll certainly try not to. I don't know, God, you overthink everything, but it's really just because you've been doing this for so long, and until you get out of your own way about that, you're not going to well, get question, like in a groove yeah, about it. You see, I question it. I question where, you what? know, why something's doing what it's doing, and and why. You know, why won't it hit that target? And that's what I'm looking for. So that's all. But who cares? I mean, who stuff. cares, really? I mean, if you made 150 bucks in this or whatever you made in this, then who cares? Yeah, just show 300. It's great. Okay, you made $300. So who cares? Yes, it's very good. I'm, I'm very pleased. You know, it's like, yeah. I think you're t you're almost taking it like too seriously or something. I don't know. I've never met anybody like that. Usually people don't take trading seriously enough. It's like you're like at the opposite side of the spectrum or something. Oh, I take it seriously. Definitely. I know, but I'm saying you almost take it seriously too much where you're over analyzing so. everything. Then it works against you. Yes, quite possibly. <laughs> quite possibly. <laughs> All right, Philip. Have a great night. You too. Thank All you. All right. Good luck in Disney. Thank you. Okay, bye. Bye. -bye.